Folks, it all comes down to this. The entire weekend of competition leads up to our grand finals matchup. And now for this hometown crowd, you've got to be excited because up first, let's introduce your Atlanta Faze. One, two, three for Major Maniac. Twice. Abizi. He fights one. He fights two. What an individual play from Priest. Of there we have it. This team is stacked from top to bottom. And to kick things off, give it up for Major Maniac. become one of the greatest players in all of the Call of Duty League. It's Sim. You saw him lead his team to the Game 5 victory. Make some noise for Abizi. MVP, MVP, it's none other than Celio! Their final player, folks, give it up for Priesta! And the match of this young talent lineup, Crowder! One more time, folks, your home team, the Atlanta Fays! One team has been introduced now it's time for their grand final opponents. It's the Florida Muneers. Thousands and thousands of hours of hard work lead to this moment. The Muneers will go in with a small lead. The Muneers will have the advantage. Now they're on your point. Look how close it is, Joe. A millimeter. What a round. We go up first. He is one of the winningest console gamers of all time. It's Frosty. Our next player, he's already had quite the emotional day, but his job is not done yet. Pristini. This man is a wizard on the map and an absolute key to victory for the Florida Mutineers. Have it! From SD Tourneys Online to a grand final, Skies! And finally, the man with the plan. Make some noise for Mox! And now the Florida Mutineers coach, Atura! There we have it. The stage is Set. The Atlanta plays the Florida Mutineers, folks of the Vegas. 
on you. Are you ready? Let's get our grand final started. This one could be incredible chance. All of today, we've had game fives, game fives. Could this be an epic final, which follows that routine? I hope so, for the neutral sake. Of course, a couple of fans here would probably prefer a more comfortable series. Uh, and speaking of comfortable series, there's one player I do want to point out and just kind of highlight for FaZe and one as well for Florida. The first being Selium. We've seen in the past when he's had these big, big games, all of a sudden, sometimes he can kind of quiet down and just slow down in terms of his pace. That cannot happen here in the grand final. The other, of course, Brastidi, but more so, not for statistical reasons, but you can still see, even in that walkout chance, the emotion that he still had, obviously just playing against his twin brother, beating him, if I'm his coach, I'm looking at him and saying, do not let that be for nothing. Make sure you keep that emotion, use it in the final, and try and win a championship. I, there's so many interesting players on this roster, right? Like, obviously, you talk about selling. He's still hunting for his first chip. Major Maniac as well. On the flip side, outside of Prestini, it's going to be every single player. And yeah, I really love the dynamic that this Florida Mutineers team has. You have all <laughs> the emotion of Prestini, and then you look at the guy sitting next to him, Frosty, just like ice cold. Just I mean, nothing on yeah. that man's face. He's, he's been in many, many of these situations, that's for sure. Maybe not necessarily in this game, but... He's no stranger to a grand final. And speaking of our grand final, map number one, say Petrograd Hardpoint, moments away. Atlanta phase, Florida Mutineers. Florida have been proving almost everybody, myself included, wrong. But can they go one step further? Can they shut down the home team? Or will, maybe for the first time, and potentially even only time, have our home team defend their city. And right now, Florida is 0-2 on this map, which means their rotations are going to need to be on point. They're going to have to solve everything as much as they can, make those improvements as time goes on, and you're going to have to do it basically right from the first kill, Ben. Well, we're underway, and we're going to kick things off on board with a BZ from Atlanta phase. The smokes and aids already flying out. Selium will find his first pick. There's a hill about to pop. No, it will be Florida Mutineers spawning on the preferred side for that P2. But can Atlanta phase try and break through early? It doesn't look like they've been able to do so. It's still currently contested. But Florida, they have the resources to keep it contested. They want to be able to win those early fights. It's a very, very small lead currently, just eight to zero as finally Florida get a little bit of control. And let the phase, they're gonna have to start thinking about those rotation shots. You mentioned it, rotation's so important on this map. Well, right now it's gonna be phase that are just flooding into the hill, but the rotation comes up. This is where you see players on the mini map for phase. They're gonna start to take their time to go all the way around to try to attack the next hard point. And that's why you have guys like number three on the mini map. They're just gonna be trying to watch that flank as time goes on. But of course the pressure on the hill matters as well. Phase putting a lot of pressure inside the hill, which means they get to go straight in through the front. Well, still 27 to one. Finally, Atlanta phase getting a couple of points fighting for that scrap time. But as you pointed out, that rotation starting to come through. Florida Mutant is still defending P2. Still defending P2 and doing a great job so far. Some of the nades up top from Sintho are going to be forcing Mox down, but as Mox jumped down, you see all those phase players actually just run straight underneath them. So they're actually going to have that early spawn control, which means a very short run to the hill, but they have to win the gunfights as well. Skies, pretty much the lone man. He's going to get dropped. Look at the kill feed. Nice and red. Atlanta phase inside. Major Maniacs had a couple of uh, cold starts today. This is not one of them. Currently sitting at just two and two, but the two kills he found, pretty important for that rotation. It's going to be simple for him. Three leading the way. Priest is not far behind of four and two. Here is Major Maniac as he finds his third kill. You can already see he's thinking about that rotation. He just booked it straight through mid map. He's ready and waiting for P3. And that's the man to watch, number eight, Major Let Maniac. Go. He's getting hunted though. He's going to get shot in the back and cleaned up. So nice job from Florida on the rotation and again. That's the key to success for them on the map. If they're struggling on it, you have to make sure the rotations are on point. So yes, they give up the lead to phase, but now it's about how well you can do holding on to Hazmat Sim, the leading man on his team. He can always make the play by himself, you can see, doing the right thing, waiting for his teammate to at least approach the hill together. Well, tries to take the first fight, shuts down Prestini, scrambles away for his life. It will be early control here for Florida Mutineers, but how much pressure can Atlanta try and put on that back spawn? Well, if Simp can stay alive here, potentially even find a kill, it would be huge for Atlanta. Not going to be the case, though, and Florida's still going to spawn close. Florida's still going to spawn close, but Simp might just be the cutoff man. You see, he's just waiting for these spawn kills while his teammates are going to be fighting for the actual hill time. And the question is, how many can he pick up along the way? The first cross is in. Simp's going to drop him, but not enough damage. He does get traded. And there was a super smart play there that came through from Havoc. He just waited to contest and find a 
couple of kills before instantly running away. And this is beautiful. Actually, Phase are going to spawn in the back, which you do not want these close spawns after that 30 second that was mark so on the hills to Florida. Again, the rotation battle is going to be pretty good for them. They're going to get to pull hall early, but look, we've seen this before, and Phase obviously on Hazmat. They did break through pretty quick, and they're still able to maintain that lead. Pressure's on Phase though. They're going to have to do it once again. Pool hall though can be one you can really lock down for a full 60, which is why Florida Mutineers made that decision. Slow start from Frosty so far at three and six. Prestini, seven and 11. Keep your eyes out for number four on the mini map. That will be Prestini to try and just pop off. He did it on this map earlier on today. Went on a 13 kill streak. He needs to try and replicate that if he's going to give Florida Mutineers a bigger lead. And it's going to start there. One and a team kill turns, finds two. Can he stay alive? Yes, he can. Unfortunately, not for long. Simp springs into life. He'll challenge and trade. However, Florida flying straight back into the hill. Christine did his job, but his teammates let him through the back. Now Atlanta FaZe have just all the pressure in the world in the hill. They're going to break on through. And again, the early rotation for FaZe does not matter. They are too strong in the slang. They're just walking on through. And this is something that we've seen in so many different hardpoint maps from Atlanta FaZe. They don't necessarily rotate early, but they will just use brute force to fly in and break hills. And because of that, there's going to be Quite a little bit of a lead, one of the biggest leads we've seen so far in this map. 107 to 73 as it currently stands. The final few seconds of scrap go to Atlanta phase. And the big problem for Florida, well, Atlanta has rotated early this time. And Simp is a man not afraid to be on the main stage. This is where he thrives, and he's got 16 kills in the moment. Oh, leading oh, the lobby, oh, but the okay. MVP right behind him. Cleanup crew inside of the hill. And this is the first time phase with that early rotation. How much time can they get? Well, it's going to be important for the Florida to try and break as quickly as possible. Frosty soars into the hill. He'll find Sully in the trades going back and forth. Still contested now once again. Back under Atlanta control as they try and build an even bigger lead with just 30 seconds left on this hard point. And you keep your eyes on the minimap for the rotations, but Priesta lines up too. He's 16 and 6 as things stand. Having a very nice run here in map one. Yeah, 16 and 6, and on a 5 screen as well. The hit fire not good enough to connect while throwing that stun. And well, he does get taken down, Florida. They're going to need a lot of pills back to back to back to get into this game. Down by 75. And yes, to the, to the first hill early, it's going to be tough to hold on. And the problem on that first rotation for Florida was the fundamentals were correct. The rotations were early. They were just being broken too soon. If they can string together a couple of holds, where even if it's only 20 seconds, whatever it is, they will just take the lead in this series. Because again, the rotations have been crisp. Phase has been out-rotated almost every single time outside of the very last hill we saw in that first rotation. And this has just been beautiful work from Simp and Ibizi. Ibizi was the man who was able to go on the full flank and effectively flip the spawns for Phase. And Simp is the man that is killing literally everything on the yes, map. 21 and 11, Ben. He has been an MVP at every single tournament that this man has won. And he is trying to let that ride. Is now Selium starting to heat up his The best thing is Simp, he's gassing up Selium. Every single time you've heard him talk, whether it's an interview, post-game, pre-game, always saying Selim is the best player in the game. He's trying to give him that confidence that Simp had throughout all of last season. I'm sure he still has today a great performance. And now all of a sudden, this game has been blown completely out. A hundred point lead developed for phase. And, and Simp has gotten through. It's actually havoc that just let quite a few of these phase players just run by effectively for free. And Simp is not <laughs> going to be able to get the kill on Frosty, but they have a little bit of pressure. Now Havoc finally coming back in to deal with the BZ and try to keep phase at bay. Nice job so far. Florida trying to settle in just a little if, bit. If you're Florida here, you, you have to take as much of this time as possible. You can maybe afford to leave the final 15 seconds if you have a good rotation. But again, then you're looking at that new hill. You have to lock down. We need to see those defensive kills start. Coming through for Florida is Atlanta phase fly back in towards the hill. This guy's gonna be in position to clean up the last couple of players. It doesn't look like it. It's so simple for Atlanta. They push the hill, they take control. Phase is just too strong, Ben. They are just too strong. They are massively outslaying their opponent. Any hill, they don't win the rotation. They break through like it's nothing. And even to this new one, you have a bit of a foot race right now. It's Priest trying to go against Skies, just racing for those back spawns. And Looks like Skies has the information on Priest of first. He's got the gun for the job, but Priest of beans him with the MP5. Uh, and honestly, that well might be the game. Map number one, Skies needed to win that fight just to give his teammates any chance as we head over towards Hazmat. 205 to 132 the score in favor of Atlanta FaZe. 
Florida have to push in. Time now is of the essence. You have to go quickly. Simp doesn't slow down. 25 and 15. His stat line is yes, Frosty finds one. But again, you've got to put pressure on the on the actual hill here, Chance. I was gonna say, good look, have fun. I mean, Priest is just in the hill doing absolutely nothing. Mox, the most aggressive one on the map. He'll be able to find one, but he's gonna get shot in the back if he just tries to move a little bit forward. But actually, his teammates have cleared it out so they get a little bit of progress to the hill. And then you run into the wall that is Simp in a PZ. Simp <laughs> killing everything in sight. Uh, 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 Florida, one to rotate to pool hole. Instead, what's happened is FaZe have played the safety game. It's gonna be Major Maniac, he's already there. This game is over. Even if Florida do contest, there's no way they'll be able to get to the new hill. It was so well pay played and so well executed, really, from Atlanta FaZe here in game. And I mean, for Florida, at this point, you just have to make the mad dash across the map as quick as you can, because you got so many players setting up inside. Major Maniac just hanging out and waiting, but for Florida, outside of a miracle, there is nothing you can do. FaZe and map number Number one, we're just too strong. And let's a phase take the lead in this final. A great, great performance in that hard point. And once again, they weren't even necessarily rotating early. Florida played the fundamentals of hard point maybe a little bit better. But when push came to shove, Atlanta just kind of walked into the hill and said, nah, this belongs to us now. I mean, it's just pure gun on gun. Every single player positive except for Selim, who's just hanging out on the map. There's not that much for him to kill when your teammates are going off like that. But realistically for me, Atlanta was 8-1 in hard point coming into this game. Yep. And then, of course, Florida were 0-2 on this map. The expectation was not for Florida to get off to a hot start here on St. Petro. They were hoping just to keep the guns warm enough. That way they can go and win that map number two. Potentially simple. The standout player from game one. 29 and 17, but let's take a look now at our Scuff Gaming play of the game from map number one. Priester, we haven't even really talked about him that much this season, but when he's hot, he's on fire. And he's a streaky player as well. This is where he ends up going on a nice little five spree, and there's the triple kill he gets as well, and just cheeky little stuff from him. I'm sure double kills like that, those are par for the course for Priester. That's just <laughs> how good he is. It is strange to think. You know, last season, we talked so much about Priester and the effect he's had on his team. This season, he's just been doing his job, and he's been doing a fantastic job at that. But really, the two players that, we, as you so often know, we talk about, Simp and, of course, Selium here at this event. And, you know, I talked at the very beginning, Chance, about my main worries for Selium. Is he going to underperform here in a grand final? No, nope. still making good plays. That's not necessarily the craziest of stat lines he's ever had, but did his job. I was about to say, if you win by, what, 125, whatever. <laughs> there's so many kills. It's not like well, there's right. much you really need to do. And I think the standout thing for Selim as well is he has just been hyper aggressive. I mean, when you look at the engagement between like between him and Major Maniac, it's absurd. Major it's Maniac has not broken 100 kills or 100 deaths up until that map in the tournament. Selim was at like 160 kills before that map started. So he is just been light years beyond some other players in this league so far. Florida down 1-0 in this final. Up next, we head to a search and destroy on Gunrunner. Chance, is this where you expect now Florida to maybe tie this final up? I mean, they don't really have much of a choice at this point. I think going down 2 0 like, well, I say that. Say they that. pulled off a burst. <laughs> great. So obviously a team that has a, a plenty of compo composure in the Florida Mutineers, but at the same time, that is not the situation you ever want to find yourself in. And the good news is, I guess a little bit, we actually did get to watch FaZe play on this map. Unfortunately for them, only once. Yes. I have to imagine FaZe is going to be a very well calibrated team and especially on a map like Gunrunner where you can just be hyper aggressive and trade everything like 80% of the gunfights it feels like on this map have been around the B site have been around yeah. that crate area if you're trying to play aggressively and with trades that's where phase is at their best the one thing Florida do have going for them is their let's be honest absurd first blood percentage it seems like it's every single map it doesn't matter who they're playing they're consistently picking up that first blood the problem they've had is actually converting first bloods into rounds this is where that needs to change chance if you're getting a first blood against Atlanta Phase and Search, you have to close that round out. And we did see that earlier in their series against London, where on Arclaw Peak, despite all the first bloods, they were losing a ton of rounds. They actually were doing a much better job converting <laughs> here on Gunrunner. So they got to keep it up. They got to bounce back. They got to figure something out to try to take down Phase. One offense again. It been Fierce and Abizi already with the double kill. Fast start for him. Ray did come through, though. It was guys that shut him down. That's of course a map that Florida have just played, but there's a ginormous flank on that minimap. Number five, that's Priester. Furthest right. That's going to cause all sorts of problems. I don't think Florida have any idea he's there. 
And as the trades come through, he's going to be the playmaker. In my mind, Priest is just going to win them this round just on the flank. Should be able to shoot players in the back unless his teammates kill him before he can get there. But there's no way that player is going to know. And well, it does come down to 1v1. Priest to tag. Oh, Prestini, is he going to go for the challenge? Has to be careful. Prestini has Priest dead to rights and gets the kill as well. A huge 1v1 in round one from Prestini. You needed him to have the ice in his veins, and he doesn't disappoint. Three kills for him in this round. And that is a beautiful 3v5. There should have been no way for the Mutineers had any right no to win that way. round. You open up, Abizi just gets the double kill, which yes, you do trade out, but then the flank from Priesta. I mean, he got the kill for free, shooting the player in the back, and had a pretty good advantage going against Priesta as well for the positioning. But he just lit Priest up, even though he's on the rock. As soon as that flank comes in, if you're Florida Mutineers, you're worried about so much. You're worried about behind you, you're worried about in front of you. You have to try and hunt down the remaining players from Atlanta phase. But overall, a great start. Uh, and as I mentioned, for Prestini, 3-0 and o to kick off game two. Former teammates, if easy opens up with two, Prestini finishes Something off with three. About, yeah. Nice little SMG bounce back, kind of vie for being the better player. Former EU United crew, so... What a day for Prestini emotionally, right? Plays against his brother, former teammate, now playing against more former teammates here in the final. And a great start for him, as we said, in round number one. But round number two, underway. You really want to go through that door, Simp? <laughs> Havoc's not going to let you. We've seen this out of Florida where they just play corner to corner on the door, and Simp, well, he's got a lot to worry about. That bomb is going to get planted. This retake is not easy. Of course, if easy makes moves, it'll be coming up behind Prestini. The question is, is who's going to hear? Meanwhile, selling him on top. You got gunfights everywhere. Prestini wins his, and Havoc's going to find him next. <laughs> Havoc just running around top of the crate, running around the rosy. Simp will fall. Mox with the trade, but trades absolutely everywhere. Mox and Frosty still up here for Florida. With 20 seconds on the bomb, it's down to Priesta now. Try and find Frosty. He did, but couldn't find the kill. Florida Mutineers take the advantage to up. And we've seen this quite a bit from FaZe where they're kind of happy to give up that B plant, try to go for the full-on five-man retake. We've had a couple times where they've been successful, but this adds to the list of a couple times where they are not Florida. Two rounds in a row. Doing a very nice job by the bounce back and got to give credit where credit is due. Prestini in his first bloods. Yes, he gets traded pretty quickly after, but just finding that opening kill on Gunrunner can be massive. Definitely can now phase they'll go back onto the attacking side see florida as you would expect really pushing over towards b trying to set the defensive play but Prasini just gone straight through the smoke i don't know about that one and selim says well okay thank you for a first blood seems like every now and again florida some players see smoke on the map they flip the coin and hope they can make a play this <laughs> hey, time we've seen it work no benefit atlanta very far back in their spawn frosty on the cross though this is important Great little spot, and he has teammates as well acting as a distraction, but skies will fall. Simp gives Atlanta phase a massive advantage, and Priesta will follow that through as well. It's surely Atlanta phase's first round in game two. Priesta again on okay. the flank, wins a close gunfight, but his teammates were there for the trades. Frosty, he had the cross earlier, and now he is stuck in a very poor corner. Simp has him locked down, Priesta there for the trade. <laughs> Perfect teamwork. Basically an alley -oop, really. <laughs> Sip tags him up and Priest says, I got you. Just jumps straight across and Frosty, dead to rights. Absolutely nothing he could do. Atlanta phase. They got on the board. And Florida's got to keep this in the back of your mind. That's the second time we've seen Priest to get all the way around back. They dealt with it pretty well the first time around. The point. When they just flew on the aggression on defense. This time a little bit more stagnant. Priest starts causing problems and well now he leads the lobby with six kills. Yeah, six and two. It's Major Maniac who's struggling a little bit. In the first three rounds, still looking for his first kill. One and three. But we start off on board. It's a busy for this round. Atlanta phase trying to defend B. And Beezy may be able to find that first blood very, very shortly. Unless a potential rotation comes through. I don't think we're going to see that just yet. Have it tagged up. Almost full. Stays alive. Mox gets first blood. Simp should be able to trade that very quickly, though, as Prestini drops and Simp, well, just gets straight out. Time is going to be of the essence for Florida. They do have 55 seconds, but because of that flank from Simp, they got a kill. They're dedicating one man for the flank. Which means they don't have a ton of resources to push towards B, but at some point, they just have to make that move. I think Havoc saw him cross. Time ticking. Monk's tagged up. Priest are looking for any angle he can possibly try and find. Shot's going down to no avail. You still have one player from Florida Mutineers trying to watch. The flank to see if anyone from FaZe is going to get a little overzealous. Bomb has gone down, though. FaZe now looking for the retake. 
Skies with that opening pick and actually Simp effectively has a trade on the map. Phase right now, they have the site surrounded. Priest is able to find the next pick and now just needs to stay alive and wait for his teammates to help him out. Skies and Havoc. 2v3. Skies will find one. Havoc somehow gets away as well. Skies may have to worry a little bit about what's going on toward the bomb site, but Simp's gonna try and push him. Simp weak as well, but he will win the gunfight. On the other side, Havoc's still alive though. 14 seconds. Surely the round won by Florida. Havoc, he wins all these rounds. Sim makes the right read for the kill, but Havoc times it perfectly to make sure Sim can't get the defuse. A smart play coming in from Havoc, a situation he has been in, at this point, probably thousands yes. of times oh, in his career. Just played the 1v1, so smart, very disciplined, didn't needlessly just fly out, knew he couldn't possibly be on bomb, waited for the perfect time to check, and of course, Sim not on the bomb. Yes, Sim will get the kill, doesn't matter though. Florida take the round. Three to one, the advantage here in game two. Nope, Major Maniac still looking for that first kill here in game two. I was gonna say, Simp and Beast need a little bit of help. Abizi opened up the game with a double kill. Hasn't gotten a single thing since in the next three rounds. Rossini has been a first blood machine and the timing goes well. Might be able to attack another one on the board. Prestini being so sneaky. Already open for him, so he's searching. Hopefully fine, well there's Abizi. Makes it 4v4, gets away very, very quickly. Did not even allow Priest at any time to search for that trade. So four versus four. Under a minute on the clock, phase one. Phase are waiting right now for Florida to make a mistake. And actually, no, instead of making a mistake, they're just gonna surge on forward. Sim drops the bomb though in a rough spot, but Selium, he's got the AR, has players tagged up, so has clearance to potentially go pick it up. And once again, for the third time, Prisa on the flank on defense, gets the opening pick for the round. Havoc, good luck, half time. He's just so sneaky. Havoc will be able to find at least one. Now, though, pressure for the one versus two. Major Maniac and Selium still up. Major Maniac hasn't found a kill yet. And they've got him trapped in. He opens up the door. There's no one on bomb. because Selium's waiting for him to make the move. Is he trapped? Havoc, he has wasted quite a bit of time off the clock. Selium forced to plant. Havoc has time to work with. So bomb planted, Havoc for the 1v3 clutch, if he's able to do this. Still two players from Atlanta phase up. Havoc doesn't have his dead silence. He did use it earlier in this round. Just comes down to, can you find Selim make a one versus one? Selim the closest player, he will. Is he gonna find the kill? He knows he has to challenge quickly, but Major Minix there, he gets all the information in the world. The smoke goes out, somehow, Havoc is going away. Can he win the gunfight? Almost. But Atlanta phase clutch up. But chance I'm gonna be honest with you, that got scary. That was nearly a gift of a smoke grenade. By the way, Major Maniac does get the kill. The issue there for Havoc, he never had information on where Major Maniac was. He spends all that time clearing out the forest area. He had no idea that he was actually trapped in showers earlier as Major Maniac was watching the back. Priest at nine and four. You've called it out a couple of times now, Chance. Priest are just hitting the flank so consistently. In different ways now, too. And it's going to be so frustrating for Florida because as soon as you think you've picked it up, he's hit it by some complete different route. There's now, though, back on the attack is Florida. They've been very happy to be stagnant, but Abizi is not one of those players. He is up in your face, in your grill. Another first blood to his name. Instantly backs away as well. Plays his life, so he'll have to phase with a one-man advantage, the five versus four. And it is Florida. On the attack, bomb goes down at B. Can they hold the site? Havoc's in a cheeky little spot here. I'm not sure Atlanta Faze are gonna know it. It's about how long can he stay alive and can Florida's... Oh, well, maybe he's gonna actually spot it here. The shots go down. Frosty shuts down Priester and... Oh, maybe he has to do it. Look over towards his right-hand side. If he shuts down Frosty, Havoc did fall as well. So just skies and mocks up for Florida. They all fall. And Atlanta FaZe tie things up. And it was just beautiful timing coming in from FaZe. Simp went on the longest flank, but he waited for it very patiently. Also, we pointed out Havoc was up top. Abizi just sniffed him out, found him, gets the kill. So he saw the idea, let Havoc kind of be the hero man for the bomb, let everyone else deal with the players. But as soon as Havoc falls, everyone else turns towards that bomb. Simp says, thank you very much. I'll take the free double kill. Just really good timing going out from Atlanta FaZe as they tie up this search and destroy. And again, it's Priester and Simp leading the way for the Atlanta boys. 18 and 8. Combined, yeah, great stat line for both of those two. On the other side for Florida, it's kind of even across the board, Chance. 
Uh, if they could just watch the flank, uh, <laughs> they'd be in a much better spot. It would help, I'm sure. Speaking of watching the flank, well, there's two players from Florida looking over towards that A-side push, which I don't think is going to come through for Atlanta Phase. They slow down the pace massively here, waiting to see if potentially someone from Florida is going to open up. And look at the adjustment from Florida. One, the grenades on point, but they've actually had two players kind of dedicated to waiting for Parisa to make his move on the flank. But either way, first blood is nice, but the move is in. But the <laughs> trades are there. They had enough dedication to say. sniff out and take care of Parisa. Oh, only took two players watching the flank, and finally, they are able to shut down Priesta with a trade, and that trade will see a one-man advantage for Florida Mutineers. Of course, on the defensive side here, four versus three. However, Abizi just find the opening, and successfully there, Mox stays alive, and Abizi wants to push through, but Sim, uh-oh. Swing and a miss, and Mox makes him pay. Havoc finds Abizi, Major Maniac now, all on his lonesome. The one versus four, he makes it a 1v3. But don't hold your breath, Atlanta, with 20 seconds left. I don't think Florida's going to give that one away. They go back into the lead. Four rounds to three. That push from Florida was perfect. <laughs> it was very close to being the complete opposite. That was, you could feel those collapse when they're about to come it's in. It's a good read, though. It's a good read, knowing Simp has a sniper rifle and know that they have to challenge and, you know, more unconventional Just way. Just make sure you double run. challenge out. Exactly. One guy wide peaks, one guy takes the close angle. Make sure you win the gunfight. That was obviously a great point. The most important thing was find Priest on the map, shut him down. He's <laughs> been just a completely involved. He's been up in your grill the entire time, double digits. You sniff him out, you get the kill. It makes your job that much easier. That's where the adjustment came in from Florida Mutineers on defense. We've seen Prestity snipe on this map today. Several oh. times that cannot happen, folks. A BZ just destroyed Frosty. Major Maniac also finds the pick on towards Havoc. So now five versus three. Obviously, the, the saving grace there for Frosty is none of his teammates saw that happen. I would hate to play against a BZ. <laughs> I think we all would, Chance, to be honest with you. There's Prestini still with Sniper at the back of the map. He'd love for his teammates to be able to try and plant B, but the problem is they're just not able to get anywhere close. It's a bit of an issue, of course, Atlanta Phase pushed so far up. And of course, Florida Mutineer is so deep into their own spawn that you're really relying now on Prestini hitting a, a very impressive snipe, which, I mean, if you're Atlanta Phase, you just don't have to peak in this final 30 seconds. You might need to hit a couple. Major Maniac might be the first victim, but either way, there's just basically no time on this clock. Florida, you got to make your move, and you got to do it now. So much of Atlanta Phase, though. Past the 50-yard line, you have 18 people watching the cross. Major Maniac might not even need to do anything. Prestini oh. actually hits the collider, hits the second player. Hits a nasty shot, got two, but again, eventually you get traded out in the five versus three. <laughs> Would have been nice, right? The sniper one versus four, not today. Atlanta Phase, so much pressure on the B site, did not allow Florida out. Atlanta tie it up once again, 4-4. I, I see the possibility of a collat, and it just stays in my head forever. <laughs> you feel like you the see, day you're is like, is over. Gonna Anytime I see two snipes, that's just going to be my hopes and dreams. But either way, nice bounce back round. They just need to find Priest and Simp on the map and kill them. That, I'm curious I mean, to see <laughs> how far they're going to play this defensively now, because last time they sent two players over to the day, expecting the Priest to flank to come through. Can they get that similar read, or instead of, they're just going to try and push through? Well, Havoc tries to make the smoke play, which we've seen so often from Florida, and it doesn't work out. Feeds a first blood again to Abizi. Now it's Atlanta Phase with the one-man advantage. Abizi has been a machine. Skies is going to fall as Simp gets that kill, and now Persini, he's got a sniper, and this is not the spot you've wanted. Means the shot he's gonna have to hit to be that much tougher. Abizi does fall, but it was his fourth first blood in this game, too. Bomb now also being planted. Three versus three. Considering the start, Florida not in the worst possible position here. Can they find the sniper on the outskirts? So it's gonna be Prestini that challenges Selly and makes him pay. There's no double chow. So now at the phase with the man advantage. Selly goes for the wide peak. How Doesn't need to get four? punished for it. And now Priest is here for at least one trade. Mox for the 1v2 time, not on his side. Going to hunt Selly him down, but he gets tagged up on the cross. Situationally perfect and from face. It's funny, you think, what, three or four rounds all the way back when, when Simp is 
you know, by himself. The double child that goes out through the crate, you don't see that from Florida, and you see a completely different result. And my favorite thing about that round is Simp, he's like punching open the fan so he can get like nades and stuns into it, trying to do the smart thing. And BZ's he's like, I'm just gonna go kill him. <laughs> and just pulls through and just causes so many problems. His level of speed is absurd. Just again, it's nothing but burst bloods from this man. He has, what, four of them so far this game, something crazy. Maybe he'll just continue it, just fly out. You've been winning the gun. I mean, I cool. stopped. All right, it's been working. It's been a recipe for success. That and, of course, Priest have been a nuisance on the map. So many little flanks consistently forcing Florida to panic and worry about what's behind them. Now, Florida back on the attack here in what could be the final round of map two. Or can they force a round 11 to try and tie up this grand final? Salian tagged again and somehow again stays alive. Slippery Snake is going to check the bomb. No, it's clear. Havoc, though. Greasy gang up top. Come on, players and you. And he just gets <laughs> taken down by a BZ no, no, no. Faze. Trying to go up 2-0 in the series. Major Maniac knows bombs down. Skies is able to find two. That's though. a huge trade from Skies. Just when it looks like the round is going away from Florida Mutineers, he springs into life, forces a 3v3, but Priesta. So sit down, Frosty with the trade again though. So now two versus two, 30 seconds on the clock. Prestini and Frosty are up, but unfortunately for Prestini, Simp's gonna see him, and Simp's gonna find the kill. It leaves Frosty for the one versus two with 18 seconds left. The only information he has is Simp. Now the one versus one, but the round is over. Atlanta phase, take game two, six to four, and more importantly, go 2-0 oh, up here in today's final. Filthy stuff from the FaZe Clan the whole way around. I mean, you talked about Freeze that had, what, 15, 16 kills by the end of the game. I think he finished off with 15 in absurd performance. The flanks coming to him from Ridiculous, but then a BZ in those first bloods. He opened up the game with the double kill, slowed down for a couple rounds, and then started destroying people. This kill on Frosty Ben. This it just can't happen. Oh my God, That's it hurts. That hurts to watch. That's just not okay. Here's a quick glance at the stats. Priesta, 15 and eight. 15 and eight, Simp 11 and six as well. Almost double positive. Atlanta phase currently 2-0 up in today's final. Florida, they fought close in the game too, but just weren't able to keep it close. And obviously tie up today's final. We'll be right back after this with what could be the final map of the day.
PS4, the official platform partner of Call of Duty Challengers. Hello and good evening once again. We are back at the Call of Duty League. Now I have some exciting news on this very special card in my hand right now because I have the results of the CDL Challengers. So we're going to announce our teams in order, of course. Now, in third place, we do have Insight. Round of applause, please, everybody here in the arena for our third place team in Challengers. That brings us on to our second place. It's going to be UYU. Please put your hands together for these guys as well. There we go. I like to hear that. And now, of course, without further ado, I've got to talk about our first place team. These guys actually had one hell of a run through Challengers. I believe they actually did lose to the second place, UIU, earlier on, but then went to win five matches in a row, which actually two of them were UIU. So please give it up for these absolutely incredible gentlemen behind me. It's Phase Academy. Come on, Atlanta. Hey, there we go. Gents, congratulations. Amazing stuff from all of you. Every single one of you guys on the stage has performed phenomenally all weekend long. So thank you so much for taking part in the CDL challenges. We're going to head back to our casters right now to get back into our grand finals. Benson, Chance, what's up, guys? Thanks, Lottie. Congratulations, of course, to those three teams. One phase team is one here in Atlanta. Will it be number two? And there's some of those players that there might be some CDL teams that should be taking a peek at some of those guys and be like, Probably. maybe we should, I don't know, pluck them from there, put them on our team. Maybe. Just a thought. Some of those guys, pretty talented. Yes, for sure. Uh, but in terms of game two, I want to take a look at our U.S. Army tactical play. I mean, phase. It was a close one, sure, but honestly, this could be the turning point in the entire game. I, I mean, take your pick, right? You're down 3-1. You need to make something happen, and Havoc is a player in a 1v2 that can just pull something absurd out of the hat. He has been a playmaker all week, but it's Element Major Maniac that try to find a way to shut him down, and this is when Havoc was forced to go on that full flank, and he never knew where Major Maniac was. The one thing I want to pay attention to is who the hell threw the smoke grenade that almost gave this to Havoc. But of course, in the end, it was just the gunfight for Major Maniac that shot some. Hey, it was Selly. If you look down on the bottom right, he still had a smoke grenade available this round. There's the shots that go down. I think he threw it just to try and stay alive. Unfortunately, he uh, didn't realize just how chaotic that was going to make things. But Major Maniac with the push, with the kill, and more importantly, with the round win as well. And, and it's just one of those swing rounds again. The difference between Huge being down 4-1 yeah. and 3-2 is insane. That four-round margin is where teams really start to get nervous, where the panic begins to set in. But let's move the series forward. Yes, Atlanta phase 2-0 up against the Florida Mutineers, but we now go to domination on St. Petro. And I feel like we've seen Florida on this map a fair amount. They're not immune to reverse sweeps. Okay. Not at all. They've had a couple under their belt, Ben, and every single time it does start with St. Petro Dom. They're 3-0 okay. on the map. And the one talking point, as soon as we've seen some valuability from FaZe, it was really just we saw their domination at the start. It was the first map they dropped as a team. It's the weakest they've been on any game mode. They're 1-1 one one on St. Petro. So for Florida, obviously, it's been the turning point for them a couple times already. They need it to be the same thing once again. The best map advantage you could possibly have against FaZe, at least on today. They need to make something happen. I mean, we both kind of mentioned how important we thought the search and story was going to be for Florida. They led for the majority of it, but were not able to close it out. Now we head to a game three. The Dom on St. Petro, as you mentioned, this has been a turning point in many of Florida's series where the start of reverse sweeps have begun. Can they do it again in today's final? It's going to be a long series ahead if Florida can make it happen. A lot of Call of Duty potentially left to play, but of course, if you're FaZe, you're trying to bring it down for the home fans, be the first CDL team to win on your own soil. And if there's any man you're expecting to have a big game, of course, it's going to be Sip or Selium who opens up with the double kill. Okay, that's a nice way to start. Atlanta FaZe, of course, on the preferred side of the map, so on the C side. It's going to allow them straight away, while the double kill will, to put pressure over towards B. I'm not going to jump on it just yet. But they do have pressure now on Florida's side. And if there's any man to watch from Florida, it's going to be Frosty. He's been putting on a show in domination for his team, but Skies is the great AR duo to do it with him, especially on St. Petro. Just trying to lock it down. You can see the feed. They're the guys that are picking up kills right now, just vying for that mid-map control before they hop the flag. 
phase with the advantage in the series, leading 2-0. to oh. I want to see how the communication is in this game. Number three, we want to send it now to an Astro Gaming listener with a phase. Havoc, 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 He's on the left side. He's on the left side. He's on the right. He's on me now. I'm B. Nice. Nice. Good job. Guys, Havoc Mox. I'll track this one. I'm tracked. 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 I'm Go back, go back. No one's on me. Blue court, blue court, blue court. Back floors, back floors. Caesar, Caesar. I'm at one. He's blue. He's dumper. He's weak. 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 Come see. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. Four, four, PSD, 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 Things got a little scary there. Chance for Atlanta phase. Florida Munir's locked in a trip cap briefly before Atlanta phase was able to break through. But I mean, you kind of called it correctly, right? Frosty and Skies, both those two guys with a fantastic start. Frosty at seven and four, Skies nine and three. Really leading the way for Florida. In face, they have to find an answer to try and shut this man down. He's just going to lock down a lane and get all the kills possible. Adds okay. another one to his list. And of course, Priesta finds one, but Havoc's there for the trade. And this is when the annoyance of a map like St. Petrograd can set in. Havoc gets behind enemy lines, and now he just needs to kill as much as possible. Start to slay <laughs> or get beat down by Sim. Okay, not how Havoc would have foreseen that gunfight going. But we're just under two minutes to go. It's Florida with a 57 to 31 point lead. B is now the target of attack for FaZe as Frosty springs into life. There's one simple go down. I'll see Major Minimac hit mid map. Does he want to take that fight? Well, there's still pressure coming in from behind. His teammates assist him there as Frosty now can decap B, but Priesta manages to find one. The team kill also came through, but Sky springs into life on B. Again, Florida playing this first side so well, Chance, keeping the pressure consistently on that B hill. They have accrued a very nice lead. FaZe has they're working out for them. They desperately want to get this second drive on board for the final minute and 20 in the game. They got a body on the point and they are keeping Frosty at bay. Able to secure it. Now you just need to settle in for the next minute. You're just trying to stabilize. Keep this two flag cap for the rest of the game. Of course here, if you're Florida Mutineers, a decap on B would be absolutely massive. But you just cannot get trip capped. And that's what's happening now. Atlanta make their way over towards A. It's a great nade, I believe, that flew straight over. That's going to stop that attack and the assist as well, but still, Atlanta doing a little bit of damage limitation. A two to one flag advantage, 20 point lead still for Florida. And again, if you're Florida, just don't get trip capped, right? Go into the half with the lead. Go into the half with the lead. You can look at the stats, you can have some listen-ins, you can do a lot, because Dom can get chaotic right now, but FaZe just doing a nice job of trying to stabilize as much as possible, right? Anytime you see someone from Florida cross that 50-yard line, they are dealt with immediately, and now FaZe, they're pushing for the trip cap. They want it for the final 25 seconds. If they can oh, jump up, they're it. down by 15 now at oh, the end man. of the half. When they get three, we're gonna have, well, a lot closer to a tied game. 18 seconds left, you're absolutely right. Florida not gonna get any points whatsoever to close out this first side. So all of Florida's hard work completely undone in about 30 seconds to close out this first side. And don't forget, it was Atlanta face it's one on the favorable side here. So going into the second side, Florida's massive lead, I believe, finishes at just 4.77 to 73. And, and talk about like the play of the game type deal, at least of the first half right there from FaZe. They were down by 15 with 28 seconds left on the clock. Now they're going to the new half down by what, three or four oh. points? Yeah. Massive turnaround, and at some point in that game, they were down by like 30 points. Yeah. Florida was teeing off on them for a very long time. As like, 
whatever team normally gets the B flag right out of the gate, normally that's the team for at least the next two or three minutes. They have a lot of success. Bear in mind, it took about a minute and a half before B was even capped. So a very slow start from both two teams. Give each other a lot of respect. But as we mentioned, Florida now on the preferred side here. Watch to see how Atlanta face, if they want to, are going to try and flip the map and put pressure on C straight away. But fortunately for them, Priester falls early. So both home hills capped up. Now the fight could be commences. Havoc just has incredible vision through that smoke, but Simp is there, gonna be for the help. Able to find two, saves Major Maniac's life, and Major Maniac says, hey man, I'm just here for the bait. Really, it's just the sea fight of the cat. Actually, there was an interesting play from Preceding, I believe that was. He pushed all the way through, he neutraled A, he stopped FaZe getting any points, and that's gonna force FaZe now to make a conscious decision off spawn. They're spawning P1, where do they wanna push? They don't have control of anything. Admittedly, it's not the worst case scenario, because Florida only have one hill. Now they're putting pressure over towards B, but you do not wanna lose control of C and unfortunately for Skies, he's all by himself. He essentially now has to try and fight a one versus three. Maybe that play from Frassini might not be the exact outcome he was looking for. I mean, FaZe can't get anything. This is going to be like the slowest lead increase we've seen in domination in quite some time. Almost no flags on the board. Florida just one tick at a time. They're having it. The double jump up as well to shut down Selim. And Florida putting so much pressure on this C flag, but still, Zim going to be behind him. Might shoot him in the back. Frassini does get the flag in time. Can't get the kill. And it was Priester that eventually said, all right, enough is enough. I'm trapped Tracking back to A, I'm making sure we're getting some points on the board. Florida still spawning over towards C, but the pressure at B is non-existent because Atlanta want to just push through. They recognize they still have a ton of time. Three and a half minutes, this is a very, very close game. They do not need to panic just yet. Someone eventually will get this B flag, right? It's been a little bit more than a minute and a half, but all the oh, fights yeah. at Bennett, C, and Priest of maybe starting to heat up the double headshot feed, and he's gonna get the flag basically by himself. And this is where it gets very scary for Florida because Atlanta are putting the pressure on for a trip cap of their own. That small lead is gonna disappear almost in the blink of an eye unless Florida can try and stabilize, but Simp is gonna say, no, you're not gonna get close to B. He has that completely locked down. Now he's going for the cap as well, and Florida off spawn, they're gonna have to push over towards A because they have no control whatsoever. Atlanta have turned this game three completely around. In Florida, they got to get to A quick, but they're getting killed along the way. You got Priesta that's behind the lines, chopping them down on their way there. And the lead has changed, oh, going and it's it. going to get worse. Skies, though, trying to be the man to stabilize just a little bit. Florida do secure the A flag, but now they're down by four. And with two and a half minutes to go here in game three, Atlanta so close to closing this out and defending their city. Can they do it? Can they cross that finish line? Or potentially Florida Mutineers get a little bit more control in this map, force a game four. Eight points is the current advantage for FaZe. And there will come a point in this map where someone from Florida has to make a play, whether it's an overextension C, which we're seeing now from Havoc, unsuccessfully, but there's gonna be one more right behind. It's gonna be Mox. Someone has to decap something relatively soon. We've seen him here before though. Look at his teammates. They're just nowhere to be found. So FaZe, they put all that pressure on C just to find that man that's wrapped all the way back, which means for Florida, they have to make a play on B. Frosty Stop. is able to sniff the first player out, but they still have not cleared out their base. Now he can't just jump on that B flag just yet, but the kills now start coming in for Florida. That's four down for Atlanta FaZe as Mox tries to push through the trades. They should come through. Skies with one. No one from Florida decap C just yet, but the pressure has come on the other side of the map. Someone from FaZe Overextends, put pressure on the home. He'll get a complete decap. Now a decap coming in at B as well. This final minute and a half chance, it's gonna get very scrappy. It's gonna get very chaotic. We're still at the point though, Florida. They only need the two cap to win this game, but they have to hold it the whole time. But if they're able to get that third flag, it can get out of control and out of control fast. Phase though, all the bodies over to C. Florida, they're gonna have to find this B flag. If things stay this way. Florida Mutineers will take this map. Phase, they'll know that, of course. And well, they're gonna have to try and push towards B, but Prestini, he's been a playmaker so often for Florida today and throughout this weekend. He doesn't want to reveal his position. Great trigger discipline, but he has to win the fight. Abizi's gonna scramble away. Now he springs into life and Sip shuts him down. Abizi finds a double. Phase are on B in a one-point game. Going to the final 47 seconds. Florida cannot allow FaZe to keep the B hill. It could be another crazy game! A Sim finds two! Prestini does finally trade, but time's ticking. You've gotta go! You've gotta go if you're Florida! And Sally just trying to kill as many players as possible. Anyone that sets foot on B, FaZe is going to swarm Florida. They have no options. They have to flood the flag. 20 seconds left.
Six point game. B's now being decapped. A huge 1v1 is going to go down over towards C, but the kill feed is predominantly red. The decap towards B, but I think Florida realize they have to go. They have to push. They need to get everything. There's no time. There's no time at all left for Florida. And Atlanta phase defend their city. They will take the Atlanta home series. A wonderful, wonderful performance from FaZe. A 3-0 victory. And honestly, they deserve it. Rule your day with a hot 3-0. FaZe expected to win this tournament coming into it, and they deliver moments, hiccups, a couple maps that they slip up, and then they turn it around, and they never took the foot off the gas. A 3-0 win. And they remain not only champions, but the only undefeated team left in the league. What a weekend for FaZe. The Academy team wins the Challenger Series. The Pro team manages to win the home series here in Atlanta as well. A fantastic performance. You get great things from Sim, phenomenal things from Priesta. Overall, everyone on FaZe stepped up. And you got newfound champions and major maniac and Selim, who's been getting the MVP chance or chance all weekend wrong. They have looked absurdly good. And now you look at this team, and I'm thinking, how do they beat them? Like, I, I just don't know how you take them down. Talent top down is absurd. Their stats are going to be insane. Their coaching staff as well, uh, about as good as you could possibly ask for. But you look for the MVPs and Simp in the finals. He just puts on a show. This final Dom game, 26 kills, leading the lobby, just cruising right along. Tell you what, is that man Selim as well? 20 and 12. A fantastic performance from him. We'll now pass it down to Luddy on the main stage. Thank you very much, gentlemen. This is your instant reaction brought to you by PlayStation. I'm here with the man himself, BZ. Oh, man, incredible job up here. You can hear the crowd already. I'm sure you can hear them while you're playing as well. Talk to me about what it feels like to win where you guys are from. This is your home. It's Atlanta. You're Atlanta phase. Talk to me about how that feels. Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, shout out to all these guys in the crowd. Shout out to my family. This is this is great. I, I, I wouldn't want any want any other way at all. Amazing stuff. Well, of course, this is you guys, you know, really like securing your dominance as a team right now on this stage. How do you feel as a team preparing for something like this, preparing for a, a grand final of, of this nature? You know, mutineers, they worked their way to get here. They were kind of ready to, to bring it to you. But talk to me about your team and, and where your heads were at before it. Oh, it was, uh, it was great. Our vibes are always good. We always hype each other up in game. And yeah, that's how we roll. Also, we did have Crowder on the desk with us, actually. Uh, and I want to talk about him as a coach. What does he bring to your team? Because he honestly, he thinks you guys are the world and, and he thinks you're amazing players. But what is he like as a coach? Oh, he's the GOAT. I mean, he literally teaches us everything we know. Shout out to him. And uh, yeah, I th can't thank him enough for what he does. Now, Sim also said that you guys get on like a house on fire, pretty much. You're a family. Do you have anything you want to say to your teammates at this, this moment in time? I mean, shout out to all my teammates. MC is the best player in the game right now. Love that kid. Amazing stuff. Well, BZ, thank you so much, man. Thank Incredible you. job today. Atlanta, one more time for your Atlanta champions. They're at home. It's Atlanta face. Amazing stuff. Now. You need to go back to your team and lift that trophy up. Come on, man. Come on now. Right, we need to move on to this MVP. I think you can see here this gorgeous little trophy next to this, this helmet of peaches here. Of course, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, people. Let's talk about the MVP right now because it's going to one man and one man only in Atlanta. I want you to erupt at this name. It's Salian! Yeah, man, well deserved. Well deserved. Incredible stuff here for you and your team. Selim, I've got to ask you, mate, how does it feel to be on the stage right now in front of your home crowd and picking up that MVP trophy? It's, it, it's honestly an unreal feeling. Like, I, 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 it, it's just unreal. Like, I have no words. He has no words, people. He has no words. But I'll tell you what your gameplay does because you are phenomenal, man. What about your team? How much does it mean for you to do this? together with your family on the stage at home. It honestly means the world to me, like just seeing you, all you guys come out and support. I'm so grateful to be like, to, do, to be doing this for like a job. I'm so grateful for everyone. Thank you so much for like supporting me. There we go, guys. What a humble guy. Go join your team. Crowder, one more lift. One more lift. Atlanta, this is the last time I'm going to ask you this, but please give it up for your Atlanta champions. It's Atlanta Bay. Well, they 
there you go guys, that's it. Our Atlanta Fags, they are the champions on this home stage right now. We will be back with the post show at CDL headquarters. See you after the break. I can't believe that! 